And with that, we said, good, good morning. Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, John, I'm looking for somebody to fill in for me. Would you like to come up? That's a perfect starter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is a set of glasses that were found back in the, uh, in the back part of the area. Uh, I don't know whether it belongs to anybody, but they come in a nice black case and no name. So I have them. I won't wear them. But if they belong to you, uh, by all means, talk to me later. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to open this morning by saying we are filming this. We put this on YouTube, and when that camera looks down, it is appearing as though we only have about maybe 10 people here on a Sunday morning. Why? Because the camera doesn't see anybody up here. So may I make a suggestion to you, please? We would like to convince the public that there's a lot of people here on a Sunday morning. I know that's your comfortable places. But next week, surprise everybody and move three forward, will you please? Just so that we can see the back of your head, whatever it is, all right. I would like to welcome back our Reverend Bright. I would like to welcome back Reverend Bright. Somebody said that he was here, he's upstairs. I have no idea exactly when he's going to appear. <laughs> if it comes up out of the piano, Ross, you let me know, will you? Okay, that's fine, good. Ladies and gentlemen, aloha. aloha. That word is used to say hello. It is also a word that says goodbye. But more important, it says love. It is a single word that has three meanings. And as we meet today, we say hello and we say love. In an hour's time, you can say aloha and goodbye. But welcome, welcome. One year ago, Liz and I were in Maui. And as we think of the wildfires that are happening in British Columbia, in Kelowna, we think of the wildfires that are happening in Yellowknife, wildfires that have absolutely devastated the west coast of Maui. Let us think of all those people who are going through times that were totally unexpected. And they will need our help. They will need our prayers. They will need us to be saying aloha. Together, ladies and gentlemen. Aloha. Next week, the church office will be closed. And that is because Stephanie will be on vacation for one week. However, while it is closed, please know that, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Sunday's not closed. He just got off the plane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Bright. As I was saying, the church office will be available by phone or by email, which will be checked throughout the week. Next Saturday, the Boucher family will be celebrating or recognizing, celebrating a lifetime of Marion. And that will be on Saturday. It will be at 10 o'clock for a visitation, 11 o'clock for a funeral, and there will be a reception afterwards in the CE building. I have a request. Some people have received an email this week from me. And the one thing that I asked was, would you consider being a scripture reader? 
And I send it out to all those people who have been scripture readers. And so I'm saying that this morning for all those people who didn't receive the email. Talk to me, please. If you'd like to be a scripture reader, as we look through September all the way through December, we're looking for four months, so we get lots of opportunities for people to volunteer. Please let me know. And along the same line of volunteering, the land acknowledgement that we have, the statement that we have been making over the last four weeks, was sort of a preliminary to what we're going to be doing on a weekly basis starting in September. And as a result, we are looking for readers for the land acknowledgement statement. Saida is sitting right over there. Wave a hand, please, Saida. There she is, absolutely. She would like to talk to you, please, if you'd like to volunteer to be part of that statement reading going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Bright's back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to do the sermon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the service. As we come and worship together at the house of God, at the place of this gathering, may God's peace be with us all. And may God's grace and may God's healing, kindness, love is available to all of us all. In the Bible lesson today, Genesis 45, 1 to 15, we listen to the story of a dreamer. Uh, his name is Joseph. Joseph was a dreamer. God communicated uh, many ways with the people of God, but one way of the communication channel was the dream people had. God told Abraham in the dream, God said, God's messages in Joseph's dream, and God said, even to the father of uh, Jesus in the dream. God continues to communicate with us in our dreams. May God's love available and made whole to all of us who continue to dream. Please join with me in the call to worship. God has called us to this place of peace and quiet. We come eager for rest and hope. The Lord is always with us, offering us refreshment for our souls. Let us partake of this wondrous gift. It is the gift of the Lord's love for us. We come and rest. 
Praise God for the absolute compassion of God's love. Amen. Our opening hymn is from Voice United 560. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee. Voice United 560. Let us continue in the opening prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. We will speak the Lord's Prayer this morning. Merciful God, we boldly pray to you, confident that you will not reject us in spite of our human failings. Your love continues to draw us together. Be with us today as we rejoice in the power of your love. Sing with us today as we proclaim the good news of your grace. Dance with us today as we celebrate the unity we share in Christ. How good it is to be together. How good it is to be together. With this joy, with each other in this place at this time. We join our voices together, our hearts and mind in the prayer that you taught your disciples, the Lord's Prayer, in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Assurance of God's grace. Do not be distressed, the Bible says, or angry with yourselves. For the divine presence, our God, reconciled Joseph and the brothers. And the same God can surely reconcile us. God's mercy extends to everyone. Let us rejoice and live in unity.
next hymn is children's hymn, Your Love is Amazing, More Voices, hymn number 26, More Voices, 26. I'd like anybody who I would like to come to listen to a very short story of the children's story time, come forward. <laughs> yeah, I should have not said short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Rachel, well, good to see you. And I'm really, uh, hi, 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 hi. Yeah, I'm really glad I'm back. Uh, you know, it's interesting, I talked about the word dream. Before I went to vacation, I dreamed that I would go. And when I was on the vacation, I dreamed that I would return. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is very subject to change, I think. Uh, well, I have a uh, goody uh, chocolate for you. Uh, anybody uh, you'd like to... <laughs> But you have to wait until, until the end of the story time. Well, uh, maybe, maybe right now. Uh, but there is, a, there, is a, there is a reason why I brought this bag uh, this morning. And I just showed the reward, kind of like chocolate. Anybody, anybody really. Uh, to be honest, only nine. Uh, 
Anyway, so let's, let's dig in and try to get the reward, okay? All I have to do is just get something inside the bag, right? Yeah, I, it's not rocket science. So when I, when I dig in and try to get the reward, and I let the bag go, oh, uh, that's a, what I was expecting. Can you say, oh? <laughs> Great. Uh, there's another bag. I let go of the bag, but there is another one. How can that be? Okay, I'm going to dig in, trying to get the reward. Finally, and I hope that I get what I wanted. Whoa! Oh no! I have to dig down my hand one more time. Okay, finally, I got it. Finally. Well, I had to let go of two bags that were covering this bag. Sometimes, to get the reward, we have to let go of something. We have to let it go so that we can get closer to... But when, he, when we let go of the bag, we sometimes we don't like the process. Well, why don't I just get it right now, just instantaneously, right? I want it right now. There is a reward. Why do I have to let go of another bag? Uh, in the Bible, Joseph's story, Exodus 45, we, we listen to his story. And Joseph, unfortunately, he had to let go of so many bags of his life. Uh, he was sold to slavery, slavery by his own brothers. And he was jailed into a prison by somebody who was working for, and he was lied about, uh, one thing after another. Uh, but finally, when he got the reward, you know the story of Joseph, uh, Jacob's son, 11th son. He became the second most powerful position in the kingdom called Egypt. He was very powerful and influential person. He got the reward. But he learned a lesson sometimes, probably most of the times in our lives, we can say safely, we have to let go of the backs. Let us pray. The gracious God, as we dream in our lives, may we, may we um, faithfully uh, let go of anything that is trying to hold us back so that possibly we can closer to that reward, that heavenly reward. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hi and good morning. good morning. The scripture reading this morning is from Genesis 45, verses 1 to 15, and you can find it on page 42 in your, pure, in your, in your Bible. Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed they were at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brother, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now you should not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land for these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made a father, made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry up and go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. Well, Benjamin wept on his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brother talked with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
I heard about this church minister. He parked his car in a no parking area. Then he put a note under the windshield saying, I have circled the block 10 times. If I don't park my car here, I will miss my appointment. And he left the scripture there, forgive us our trespasses. <laughs> when he returned, pleasantly, he found a citation. It was from the local police officer saying, I've circled this block for 10 years. If I don't give you a ticket, I will lose my job. With the scripture, lead us not into temptation. <laughs> Forgive us our trespasses. It seems to me, maybe some of you may agree with me, uh, the word forgive or forgiveness is becoming more and more difficult word in today's world. Forgive. Genesis 45 gives us a good insight or a good lesson so that we can relate to or we can participate in that movement of forgiving each other. Forgiveness. Forgive. In other words, we let go of the hurt we were holding on to. We release that stress. We move forward. Forgive. What a challenging word it is. What a challenging action it is to forgive someone. Verse 1, Joseph could no longer control himself could no longer control himself. He talks about the emotion he's dealing with right now. In a different translation of the Bible, it says, Joseph couldn't retrain himself. And verse 2, the reason is, he wept aloud. He wept aloud. There are moments in our lives that you are just going to lose it emotionally. And you're going to weep aloud, maybe in a silent room all by yourself or with someone you love, family member, you weep aloud. In fact, if anyone says to me, right, I don't ever cry, I feel sorry for that person. I have to say I'm sorry because we all need to be able to weep every once in a while. Because that's just a part of human being. We are designed, we are created to weep every once in a while. Scholars say crying helps improve your mood. Our stress level when we cry helps us sleep better and strengthens our immune system. It's not weakness, it's just being human, because that's how we are created. So that's what I do. Every Sunday morning I come here, I weep. <laughs> Joseph cannot strain the emotion. He's now lose it emotionally. He can keep it under control. He's not out of control. He's not out of control emotionally. He's keeping that under control, but he let it go. He weeps aloud. It was not the size of the problem or issues that is important, but it was his perception of the problem. His perception has changed. It's how big or small he was making in his own mind. When we allow what someone says offensive or does to upset us, we are allowing that offense to control us, giving away our power to keep our peace. We can't just rebuke everything hard. We can't expect to pray away everything difficult in our lives. I've already tried it. It's not going to work. 
Just because we put our emotions under control doesn't mean that we're never going to lose control of our emotions. Joseph could tell everyone to go, leave me alone. And before, before he began to cry aloud, before he began to weep. Now the brothers were completely dismayed when Joseph revealed himself, the 11th brother, the person they sold a long time ago to slavery because of jealousy, because of nonsense, because of the dream Joseph had. The dream was what? Brothers, you're going to bow down before me. I'm the cream of the crop. I'm the favorite child of my father. They couldn't believe their eyes in front of their eyes what is going on. What someone who they thought gone is not only just alive, he is the second most powerful position in politics, in finances, in everything in front of their eyes. They were dismayed. Can you imagine what was going through their minds at the very moment? They have the instant video replay going on in their thoughts. Have you done it before? Those moments where you physically or basically caught because of something that you have done wrong in the past? I've done something bad in my life. I was caught, I remember, by a police officer. Okay, this is a place of forgiveness. <laughs> this officer caught me because I crossed double solely line on that street. I said, officer, I regret what I did. I'm not sure what I was thinking about. I'm a very poor, poor minister. <laughs> Somehow, someway, um, he... Uh, he gave me a warning, and I just turned around and said, yay. <laughs> Sometimes someone has confronted us with the truth about what we have done in the past. We all know what it's like to be confronted by justice. And often we go like, oh, I'm busted. And we realize there isn't anything we can say or do. They probably remember the brothers, what they said to Joseph, all their mocking and attitude, thinking, we are done. We are done. Joseph, now he's going to take revenge on us. And yet something very different was about to take place. Something very different was about to take place. And Joseph assures them that God had a great plan. And not only great, but greater plan that the evil than the evil that they intended for him. How can that be? Joseph just said, God had a greater plan than the evil you guys had intended for me. Verse 5. Just read just for verse 5 and stop and pause for a moment. These guys are probably on their knees. Now, for Joseph to say, God sent me before you to preserve for you, Although you have done all the evil to me, Joseph was able to say that was meant to be. He had probably worked through this whole issue in his head. Sometimes we work through issues in our mind. We reason through things in our heads. Why did my loved one go through what they went through? Why did my baggage come, didn't come, out at the airport when everybody already picked up and went home? That's what happened to me, by the way. Why do bad things happen to me? Why do bad things happen to me? There was a book that I was reading on the airplane, uh, the title written by Rabbi uh, 
Harold Kushner when bad things happen to good people. The rabbi Harold Kushner attempts to, in that book, to answer the question by saying, bad things happen to good people, I quote, so that we can move from the question, why did that happen, to the question, now, since this has happened, what can I do now? What can I do now? We reason through our issues in our mind on and on. This is probably really something hard to work through. Some of the issues, Joseph had some of the most terrible, horrific, evil things done to him. And it didn't stop once he got into Egypt. The terrible things continued to happen. Now, sitting in the second most powerful position, he has gotten several years here to work through this in his head. In fact, it took 22 years to work through this issue. He thought about this again and again and again and again. Why did they sell me to slavery? Why I was in the prison for something that I didn't do? Why the people that I worked for disregarded and completely ignored me? 22 years he thought about it. And then his conclusion was verse 5. God sent me here before because God wanted to preserve your lives. Romans 11.33, how unsearchable are God's judgments and how inscrutable God's way. This means God's ways is past our finding out. This infers even when we go through something that we cannot reason through our mind, we need to be careful not to make instantaneous conclusion or decision, but we have to take some 22 years, so to speak, to reason through, reason the issue through our mind. 22 years, Joseph thought about it again and again and again. And the conclusion was, this was meant to be. God sent me here before you guys to preserve for you and your family and everything that is related to you. This was meant to be. That was his conclusion over the slavery over the wrongfully accusation, over people completely ignoring him. 22 years, he thought about it again and again and again. But I admit, we sometimes become bitter. We try to come up with quick solutions, so to speak, like this person, this Shopkeepers, two shopkeepers were bitter rivals. I heard about if one owner got a customer, the other owner was bitter. And if one got a customer, that owner was smiling in triumph at the rival. One day, an angel appeared to one owner of the shop in a dream and said, God will give you anything you ask for. But I want you to know that whatever you ask, whatever you ask, whatever you get, your competitor across the street will get twice as much. Would you be wealthy? But that person will be twice as rich. Want to live a long and healthy life? But that person will be longer and healthier. The owner in the dream of the shop frowned, thought for a moment, and said, All right, my request is... Strike me blind in one eye. Anybody can rationalize a little fling. Joseph could have said, my mom died when I was younger. My father indulged me, giving me unrealistic view of life. My brother hated me. He could have justified his obedience, leverage later on, for a better position. 
Maybe that is why, this is why things have happened to me. Maybe there was a reason why bad things happened to me. Now, Joseph's final understanding on that is, now things have happened to me. What can I do now? Now things have happened to me. What can I do now? Someone who is going through the third round of chemotherapy after losing his wife to cancer. But I remember his energy and smile still telling me that I have to go through this. To the lady whose husband left her for another woman while she was pregnant, where is God? To the man who grew up abused and now struggles with his identity, the single mom who takes care of her 16-year-old daughter paralyzed by a car accident, but still want to continue, still smiles. Where is God in the midst of devastation? Why bad things happen to us? Joseph challenges all of us as we question these kind of questions. Now, things have happened to us. What can I do now? Are you a dreamer? Well, I should have asked, uh, when was the last time you dreamed? I'm a dreamer. I wish I can dream again like I used to. I remember when I was younger, some 20, just a couple of years ago, I used to dream a lot. I used to dream of a better day. I used to dream that I would drive a nice car, live in a, a fancy house. I used to dream that I would be rich. I used to dream that I, I have wonderful family. But in some 20 years after, I don't know what happened to my life. While on vacation, I shared a room with my daughter. One morning, she awoke. She told me she had some nice dream. Oh, that's great. I told her, I wish that I could dream like you did. She said, Dad, you can't because you snore too much. <laughs> a wife, in my dream, I saw you in jewelry store. You bought me a diamond ring. The husband said, I had the same dream, and I saw your dad paying the bill. Dreamed. The word dreamed, the past form of the word dream, the verb dream, dreamed with a T at the end, is the only English word that ends in the letter M-T. The average person has over 1,460 dreams a year. Most dreams last only 5 to 20 minutes. Scientists say the higher your IQ is, the more your dream is. The colder room you sleep in, the better chances you will have a bad dream. Are you a dreamer? You can say yes. Because we need dreamers. We need people who dream that everybody is treated equally. We need people who dream that everything will be okay. We need people who dream that my life would be happier and happier again. Joseph was a dreamer. And how can he, how could he dream after all the troubles, betrayal, lied about, wrongfully accusation, sold to slavery, how could he become a dreamer? He 
he let it go. He let go of the box, one at a time. He thought about it, that wrong thing, for 22 years, and then he let it go. Now, some 17 years later, the story goes on after chapter 45, when Jacob, the father of Joseph and the other 11 brothers, Jacob had 12 sons, and Joseph was one of them. The father, Jacob, died, and the brothers were so afraid that finally Joseph will take the revenge on them because the father has passed away. They were afraid Joseph then take retribution upon them. Chapter 50, 17, the brothers send the messenger telling, I beg you, Joseph, please, please forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong we did in harming you. And Joseph wept again. Joseph wept again, saying, Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. This is where we, fra- we get the phrase, God forgives us and God remembers the sin no more. As Jesus repeated Joseph's word again and again. Joseph let it go. Joseph forgave. Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph learned how to forgive once and for all. There are moments in our lives where we cry. And in that crying, I want you to join with Joseph. Every time you cry, every time you cry, in that crying, we forgive. We let it go. Amen. Our response to him is from Voice United, hymn number 593. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Voice United, hymn number 593. <laughs>
continue to worship together at this place. May we learn how to forgive, how to let go of the offenses, what is trying to hold us back, whether it's, whether it's a mental issue, whether it's a financial issue or a relationship issue. As we offer what we can offer, we pray that, O oh God, you take all these bondages away from us. O oh God, we offer what we can offer. Now today's offering is received. Gracious God, as the family of Joseph have gathered again, O oh God, we are reminded of once again how important and how the theme of the Bible is centering around this unit, family. When we are overwhelmed by 
changes and challenges in the world that we live each and every day. May we begin. Give us your wisdom so that we can begin with our family. We offer what we can offer. O oh God, we pray that you respond to each one of us in a gracious manner. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us pray the prayers of the people. Loving God, like Joseph, we don't always understand why things happen the way they do, why our plans and dreams fail. And we find ourselves facing challenge after challenge, disappointment after disappointment. Yet like Joseph, we also believe that somehow, some way, there is divine work in our lives. And that there is a larger plan and purpose for each one of us. So we come this morning and we pray that we pray. As we face challenge and disappointment in our lives, may we see the divine larger plan, purpose in each one of us. In our prayer, O oh God, we remember Nancy Waymond and the family who had a celebration of life for Nancy's husband yesterday. And we also remember in our prayer the family of Marion Boucher. Our thoughts and prayers are on Don. And we also remember in our prayers Maureen Lyon who had an interment service this past Sunday at the Urn Garden. Oh God, in the Bible we are reminded that when, when things are seemingly out of control, when things are hard and difficult, famine, flood, people losing their lives, we are reminded that the divine plan and purpose always begins with a family. Seemingly, strangely, seemingly hard to understand. But God always begins with this family. We take the inventory of our family lives. And we know, oh God, that we know we all need reconciliation in our family. There is joy, but there is a brokenness. There is a smile, but there is a frown. And we know, oh God, we need reconciliation. We are Joseph, and we do have the 11 brothers. We are Joseph, and we, are, we have someone who is dying, someone who is having difficulty, someone who is struggling. May we reconcile with our family members in peace. And to extend that, we take a look at, we take a good looking in our knocks 
extended church family. Like every church in the world, we also need reconciliation here at this church. So we pray. We pray that, O oh God, you bring to each one of us wisdom, love, kind words, smile, everything we need so that that reconciliation takes place here at this church. So that Knox becomes a door to happy moments, positive lifestyles. People come and see joy and positive things they can get. We pray. Oh God, we pray. We pray. May we know that you're still with us. There is a larger plan and purpose in each one of us. In your name, Jesus Christ, the Reconciler. Amen. Our closing hymn is from Voice United, hymn number 589, Lord Speak to Me, Voice United 589. Like the brothers gathered to get together, the Bible continues to record the family reunion, like we do experience Knox extended church family each and every Sunday. May God's peace be with us. May God's reconciliation be with us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.